All right, we're back. R slash unpopular opinion. We we were not gonna do this one. This is a bonus special episode because bonus because game. stinking Braxton or sorry, not stinking Braxton, stinking Noah over here read it out and he's like, oh, this could be funny. And then Braxton tried to defend this person and this person is unreasonable and wrong. So we're gonna talk about it. All right. <laughs> People get pissed at it because it works. No, no, you gotta read the title. Camping Come on, bro. Call of Duty, camping and Call of Duty strategy. There you go. There you go. Yay! Camping can be good. It can be a good strategy. Thumbs up. And if it gets kills and wins, there's nothing wrong with it. Nope, not at all. Of course, it's annoying when someone isn't playing an objective. Cause you know what's the point of that? We can be camping for a bit and slowly move to an objective is a good strategy. Insert and destroy. Gunrunners hate it because it's a reasonable counter to that playstyle. I am Kill starting this conversation. I'm going to start right now because I'm pissed. All right. First of all, in every single Call of Duty, by the way, the net code works, you have Peeker's Advantage. Now, for all you kitties at home who don't know what Peeker's Advantage means, it means that the person who peeks first, i.e. moves their line of sight first. So if, you know, if I'm on one side of the corner and Steven's on the other side of the corner and I turn the corner first, I see him before he sees me. So literally, by the way the game is coded, by the stinking networking configurations, the Peeker has an advantage. It's called Peeker's Advantage. It's a concept in most FPS games. It's due to the way that the servers handle inputting data to clients. And with that being said, Gunrunners hate it because it's a reasonable kind of play style. It's factually wrong because the gunrunner sees you before you see them. So literally, the only change that happens here is as I'm turning the corner, I see you sitting in the corner, laugh and kill you because you're sitting in the corner, or I turn the corner and see you running at me and laugh and kill you because you're running at me. Either way, you're still going to die because I saw you first. Why would I camp in a corner? Okay, all right. Where where would you camp? I'm I'm curious. Where where are you camping? At a vantage point. Okay, so you're saying camping on high ground. Uh, probably yeah. Okay, I mean I, that would be reasonable because then you would see me first, which in theory could work. But if I'm looking, it wouldn't work. Like the whole. Okay, so I think playing high ground is a fundamental point of any FPS title, right? You always want the you know shout out to Obi Wan the sensei. You're always supposed to have the high ground, right? Like this is this is fundamentals. This is like this is FPS 101. Play high ground, right? Like anytime you can have the high ground, you are at an advantage over the people on low ground, right? But there's a difference between you saying I'd be playing on high ground and people saying I'm camping or I'm going to camp, right? When we think of someone camping, the first thing we think of is the dude with a shotgun in Call of Duty. He's got his riot shield. He's got his Spaz 12. He's got his claymores and he's sitting in the corner of a map waiting for you to turn to the corner on the staircase and run into him, right? That's like the classic camper, right? That's what we're all thinking about, right? We're not thinking of Johnny Good over here sitting up on the high ground with a sniper rifle having a good time, right? That guy... It, you know that's what i'm saying like the art like if we're talking about like playing high ground yeah playing smart playing slow playing on high grounds to making use of your you know mobility abilities getting from one high ground to the other making sure you're changing the setting of the fights you're isolating 1v1s you're not taking 2v1 3v1s etc like all the fundamentals of good fundamental fps play right that's all like not the side what we're saying is people who are you know they just got off their nine to five they cracked open a cold one with the boys and they're sitting in the corner <laughs> on sneaking the middle of their spawn instead of playing the objective and hard point those like these are the people we're talking about right like those people have no right to an internet connection and i will stand by that opinion hold on, hold on. i don't know what hard point is but i'm just talking let's say it's a it's death like king match. Of, it's like hard, king yeah hard of point's hard literally king of the hell yeah, yeah that's what that is all right well so footsteps right they hear footsteps and you know when they're gonna turn the corner and then you use your claim war or something like that okay i haven't played too much call of duty but i know that you can hear your footsteps and that's useful and you're not making any because you're sitting still i don't know how the radar ping works i don't remember but i don't think you're as visible or you don't have to be or something yeah cod radar is based off gunshots unless you have a uav so if, unless you're shooting you're not pinging okay so like yep. i could understand the idea right like if you're playing a not objective based game right so like if we, we take objectives out of the equation right we're not playing king of the hill we're not playing ctf whatever we're playing your bread and butter slayer team deathmatch whatever you want to call it right free for all right okay in the objective of the game is to win right so fundamentally you are trying to kill more people than the other team is trying to do right so yeah. okay think about it this way right camping in a corner in an fps title is the same thing as never asking a girl on a date because that way you preserve your 100% success record, right? Like, 
Yes. You're not like, yes, you have a 100% success rate triggered of everyone you asked out saying yes because you've asked literally no one, but you're also not going to go on a date. Then you got your runner gunners over here who are running around the entire map killing everybody because even if they die to some nerd sitting in a corner, they still respawn and kill three more people before they go back there. Like, it's playing a very selfish style that doesn't get rewarded as much as just being good at the video game and actually just going and shooting people. You know? Because it's like. Depends on where you. Okay, but if you're camp, okay, so with the way map design is working, right? If you want to camp, you need to camp in an area that has isolated entrances and exits, right? So that you can control the flow of the pace of the match, because otherwise you get swarmed. So if we're playing in a position where we can control the flow of the map, that means we can't be going and playing in any major choke points, because major choke points would have a lot of traffic. Because if we're getting a lot of traffic, we're not able to isolate and take 1v1s, right? Because that's like the whole fundamental behind camping, is you're trying to make an isolated 1v1 where you have the surprise advantage on the other player, right? And that's the idea behind camping, is taking an isolated 1v1 where you have an advantage on it, right? So, based off of that, you can't play in any high traffic area, because if you're playing in a high traffic area, you will be interrupted in your 1v1, and somebody will come and third party you, right? Which is not something you want. You want isolated 1v1s where you have an advantage inherently. So, you can't do it in a high traffic area, which means you have to do it in an isolated area. And if you're doing it in an isolated area, that means that your likelihood of getting an encounter is very low. Because the first time you get an encounter, unless a person's crazy, they're not going to run back in there, they're just going to say, oh, somebody's camping in the building? Okay, and then just not go there, right? That's the easiest way to deal with a camper, is to don't fight them. Well, after getting a couple of kills as a camper, you want to move your location. But also, if you're in a uh, high traffic area and you're well hidden enough, or maybe a couple of people pass by you, you can get those two kills and then probably move locations again, but it depends. Well, but again, if you're in a high traffic area, the likelihood of you being unseen is less likely since that area has more traffic, which would equate to more pair of eyes, which would equate to more people seeing you, right? Because it's like, okay. Or if you had a think about, no, 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 think about it this way, right? Like, think about um, firing range in Black Ops. Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 4 had it, right? That's the map. Uh, we'll throw it up on the screen right now for everybody at home. If you guys, you know, so you guys can all see what we're talking about. Now, the middle point of the map, right? There's a passageway in a choke point, right? It's it, There's a firing tower, like a sniper tower up to the left. Then there's a building that you can set in sort of right. Huh? Can you share your screen so I can see it too? Uh, I don't have it pulled up. I'm doing it from memory. If you Google it, it's firing range from Black Ops 1. Okay. So there's the middle area is a choke point, right? There's a sniper tower up to the left of it. There's a building to the right of it. And then you have a through pass, which leads down to a respawn area. And if you go up, it leads to the center of the map that's in the wide open that nobody goes to because it's in the wide open and you die if you go there, right? So... That type of area is what I'm talking about, right? That's a high traffic area. Now, to sit in that, there are corners, but those corners are visible from multiple angles, which means that if you're sitting in the corner, you can be seen from at least two to three other different angles as people come in, right? So you have to cover more angles. Another good spot on that map, like a spot on that map that gets used for camping a lot, is the bathrooms by, I think it's Sea Flag Spawn, which is the bathrooms on the back right-hand corner of the map, right? That spot's really good because it only has two entrances and exits, and it has like four or five different counters you can sit in that still get angles of the door, so you can see both doors at the same time, right? Um, another spot on that map are the trailers. That's a place a lot of people like to camp is the trailers, right? Which is literally just a trailer with two doors and an open roof and a window that people can climb through. And that spot's really popular too. Now those spots aren't high traffic though well the trailer is relatively high traffic that's about as high traffic on that map as you can go for camping right um now if you play there right the f thing that happens is it's a that spot's grenadable right so you can need it b that spot has two entrances and negatives so you have to cover two angles but you can cover both angles from any one position which is why it's good so it's like that's the type of position you need to play as a camper to get value you need to like play an angle where you can still be in a relatively high traffic zone while also still getting a safe position where you're not going to be overcompromised. But even then, it's still better to, rather than just sitting in that room, waiting until you get a kill, then leaving. It's better to sit in that room, wait until somebody comes near you, go out and get the kill, then reset, right? Like, it's still better to go out and do something than it is to be stationary. It's like, okay, um, how can I describe this? It's like, okay, think about it this way, right? If you and I are both outside, right? And we're both trying to pick up acorns off the ground. If you stand still, waiting for an acorn, acorn to fall on you under an acorn tree, right? Odds are you'll catch one or two, right? But if I'm running around the tree picking up all the acorns, I'm reasonably expected to get more, right? That's like, that's the difference between like camping and not camping is you're sitting waiting for something to come to you, hoping it happens. Whereas the other person who's running and gunning is moving and hope, like not hoping, but waiting for something to hit them. And then when it does, they're going through it, right? It's like, it's much more proactive rather than reactive. You know another thing camping could be used for? Mm. 
securing a location. Y you know what? And if you want to camp on an objective, by all means, go for it. That's amazing. People camping on objectives are things I love. It's great. Whenever it's an objective-based game, you should be camping on the objective. I'm talking about more like camping a flank if your team is pushing one way. I mean, that could be true. That's the thing. Holding rotations is the thing. But that's done situationally, right? Like, if I'm... Okay, so, for example, if we're talking about CS... This Reddit post says camping can be a good strategy. And okay. If it get, get kills and wins games, there's nothing wrong with it. But what... Okay, yes, theoretically. But what I'm saying is that what you're talking about isn't camping. It's holding for a rotation. Because, okay, so... Holding a flank is done for specific reasons, right? You don't just hold a flank to hold a flank. You do it because of something, right? So, for example, uh, think of, like, Dust 2 on Counter-Strike, right? So CSGO, Dust 2, right? If we know the opposing team is going B, right? Like, uh, we're terrorist side. We're taking B. We know that the, the CT team has been stacking 3A to B, right? Now, if we're going to B site, right? That means we want one person lurking mid, watching the mid rotate right which would in theory to your argument be camping but what we're having him do is we know that there are players who are forced to walk into a choke point where he is waiting to get an advantage on them so he's not actively camping so much as he is waiting in a choke for someone to walk there and then shoot them right and then once he's done that he rotates back to the objective he doesn't sit or continue to play isolated angles he actively goes to a choke waits for someone to come to the choke kills them then rotates off the choke and goes somewhere else and then and, the person that he kills types, types in chat, what a camper. Okay, but that wouldn't be camping, in theory. That'd be actually playing the objective, because he's actively playing the objective, right? If he was sitting, like, in T-spawn with an op, watching, like, wood doors or something, right? Like, from A-long, then that'd be camping. Like, he's just AFK for no reason, holding a dumb angle, waiting, right? That'd be, like, very campy. But holding... Wow. What? I think that the meaning of camping has been twisted over the years because people use it so often to describe things that, I mean, that even you're talking about with that thing that you say isn't camping, which, I mean, it shouldn't be that, but people call it camping so much. I'd like to argue that this person uh, is using camping in that way because he's saying strategy. And he even mentioned slowly moving to an ob toward an objective and stuff like that. Okay, so I think then we need to define what camping is and isn't, right? Because if you're referring to holding because rotations or... area is, you know, of course, bad. Yes. It really depends on how you use it, and I feel like how long you use it is also very important. Mm -hmm. So, uh, And I feel like it's just kind of holding a small area is what camping is. It's well, but like, my definition for camping would be holding playing within a set area that is irrelevant to the rest of the match. Right. So like if we're, you know, again, going back to like dust two, right? Like if we're going B site and we know as a team, we're all going B site and we have one of our team for some reason, AFK in like a long, right? Just chilling out there, not doing anything, not helping the team, just camping. Right. That I think that would be an accurate, definite, like an accurate use of the phrase camping. Right. Oh, he's camping out on a long for no reason. Right. Like he's just kind of set up his tent and he's doing his thing out there. Right. Because that's like what, I don't uh, know this is what this person's talking about in the post, though. Well, then I would argue that they aren't talking about actual camping then, because camping, to me, at least, would imply... Sitting there and doing nothing isn't going to get kills or win games. Well, yes, but that's exactly why people don't like camping, because the classical... Like, the classical idea of camping, right, is you set up your tent and you AFK, right? Like, you have your riot chill and your claymores, and you're set up in a room chilling, right? Which is, like, the argument that... I think what you're trying to argue is that there's nuances to it, but what I would say to that is that those nuances aren't the thing you're talking about right like camping as a whole is illogical and doesn't work holding rotations playing angles setting up 1v1s like playing smart fps rather than just like running and gunning could work but that isn't playing camping that's playing a lot like that's playing solid fps fundamentals right like it's not i'm camping something it's i'm doing something right like camping would be like oh i know the rocket launcher is going to spawn here in 20 seconds so i'm just going to sit here for 20 seconds should you be sitting there for 20 seconds no you should be rotating around come have your teammate pick it up in 20 seconds right like but you're just going to camp on it Alex underscore two two five nine says, "Camping can be a strategy. If it gets killed and wins games, there's nothing wrong with it. If it, so, it sounds more like he's talking about what I'm talking about because he getting kills and winning games. Which I don't know what he's saying by winning games. If he thinks that standing there and getting one or two kills wins the game, then 
I disagree with that, but <laughs> uh, I mean, if he didn't die the whole time and got two kills, then yeah, but mm -hmm. I don't know, like, again, it's just like, it's how much, but like, how much of that did he really do, right? Because like, okay, so for, so for example, if Alex2295 over here is playing, right, and he gets, we'll say he's playing TDM on the latest Call of Duty, right, and he goes, we'll give him a generous KD of like, what? six and one camping Two. right Three. yeah he went like six kills one death while camping right like, which in my opinion and my experience is extreme for somebody who's camping like due to the like classical definition of camping right i think six kills is rather extreme for that but we'll give him benefit of the doubt and assume that he got went six and one right and we'll say that a normal right. tdm goes to like what 75 something like that right i think so mm -hmm. went to 75 he did six kills so out of 75 total kills he got six of them right so even then if his saying is oh it wins games it's like no statistically speaking you did not do enough to win the game you did enough to not drag your team down you were statistically positive but not enough to carry the team right like if it's going to 75 you need to put up like at least 25 or 30 to be carrying your team right to be able to put up numbers that are like representative i did something to help the team achieve a notable success right like it's more than I participated and I actually did something to win for the team, right? Like if I'm like, if all three of us are playing a game right now, right? And Braxton and I are camping and Iconic is running around and gunning, right? And Braxton and I both go five and one and Iconic goes 50 and 0. While yes, Braxton and I can say in theory, we helped and we didn't lose the game and we helped as a win. It's relatively obvious that Iconic was the one who did something, right? Like without Iconic, we would have guaranteed not won the match because our kills alone couldn't win there. So it's like... That never happens. <laughs> it happens in Destiny sometimes. <laughs> um, I have to disagree again here. Uh, okay. Because <laughs> even if you're not getting those crazy kills, uh, people do get angry at campers and they'll all be trying to kill the camper and so a lot of people will be going after them probably and while they're distracted the teammates will pick up the kills of the people trying to run towards the camp okay but that's assuming a lot of factors first of all it's assuming that people get annoyed at campers in my personal experience the only people who get annoyed at campers are bad players or let me rephrase that the people who get annoyed at campers and do something about it are the bad players in my personal experience Anytime that I've been playing with a core, you know, a good group of players that we were playing together and we know someone's camping, we say this person's camping there and then just nobody goes there and we just leave them alone to do their thing off in a corner and win the match as we just kill the rest of them over and over again, right? right. If he... Strategy. Huh? Yeah, it's a counter strategy. It's a yeah, counter. it's, you know, it's like the crab sitting in a corner. You just don't kill the crab. You just go pick up its buddy in the ground and eat that one. You know, it's like if you're, if you're isolating yourself from the... And starts camping somewhere else. Okay then he maybe gets one more kill than we ignore him again. Like, okay, like, I understand what you're saying is that, like, what you're saying is, like, okay, if he you get ignored, you just move and go somewhere else. It's like, okay, cool, but he has a chance to die while he's moving, and if he gets to the new place, if he gets another kill, the same thing happens. Like, at most, he's getting a kill in a spot in Force to Rotate, which, in that point, he's no longer playing campy because he's just starting one place and moving his place every time he gets killed. So he may be camping in a location, but he's still moving a lot, which means he's still roaming around the map, which means he has an increased likelihood of just getting killed as he's roaming. Because, fundamentally speaking, right, if you're talking about like the classical definition of camping, right? Where you're just AFK in a building with your shoddy and your claymore and your riot shield and you're posted up ready to kill some people. Statistically speaking, that is done by players who are less than uh, above averagely good, right? Like it's not the above average gun skill players who are running around and sitting in a corner hiding with the riot shields, right? The statistically above average gun skill players are the ones who are running around killing stuff, right? So it's like, if you're saying that if he gets a kill and rotate, gets a kill, rotate, gets a kill, rotate, my argument would be, if he's rotating, he's risking himself to dying, which would then assume that he gets a kill, which is like, this is my more likely scenario, right? He gets a kill. He sits in the corner. Nobody comes to this corner. He gives up and moves. During the process of trying to move somewhere, he dies. He respawns. He goes over there. He gets a kill. He moves. He dies during the rotation. He respawns, goes somewhere else. It's like, you see what I'm saying? It's just like, instead of getting the value that he would be getting from having a positive KD, he's just negating that by dying over and over again during the rotations. Unless he just doesn't die during the rotations by moving with his team. Okay, but after getting spotted, he finds the safest route to get to a different spot. Okay, so even if that's the case, and we'll assume he has like a sixty-six percent success rate, right? Because there's no way that he can entirely rotate like around the map constantly without ever dying, right? So if we assume he has a sixty-six percent success rate of rotation, right? And we'll say he'll rotate like what three times, right? So he gets, we'll say he has six and he has six total kills each time he rotates. 
out of the six or three times he rotates he lives two dies once right so he gets like three rotates he gets he's three and one right so he has a 3.1 3.0 kd which is great but again the kills are irrelevant compared to the rest of the match right like when we're talking about like raw tdm the only thing that matters is the pure output of kills to the pure output of deaths right so you're looking at the raw kd or kda of the players right and your raw damage output right so if you got a player who's going like in t team deathmatch as a like as a game mode right like the way it's played you want to be killing people so if you are actively going out of your way to not be engaging with the enemy and not be killing people then you are fundamentally subverting the gameplay ideals which again like with your argument of oh he's trying to rotate and he's trying to do stuff i understand your uh, like idea and opinion that they're trying to do something else they're not trying to like just hide in a corner but what i'm saying is that in the classic definition of camping right it's a player who posts up in a room and doesn't move they just sit in the room until they die they respawn they go to a new room and sit in there until they die and it's over and over and over again and this fundamentally doesn't work like we can put it in practice where you put a camper on a team versus six people who are running and gunning and typically speaking if the running and gunning team has any player who is slightly above average they will outperform the other team because that player will be able to compensate for the lack of player on the other team and win. Because the camper is essentially putting their team in a numerical disadvantage by not participating in the gameplay. It's, uh, it'd be like the equivalent of like, if we're playing football, right? Or sorry, if we're playing soccer, right? And instead of all of us fighting for the goal, we each said, okay, here's what we're gonna do. Our team is going to have eight people chase the goal, right? Because all that matters is we get to 10 before the other team. It doesn't matter if they get to 8, as long as we get to 10 first, it doesn't matter. So what we're going to do is we're going to have one person sitting on our goal, and then we're going to have three people that are actively going to score, right? And then the other team says, okay, that sounds great and all, but I'm going to have me sit in this left-hand corner of the map over here just in case the ball ever comes over here so we can negate that. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, what? It, like, it just doesn't make sense. The goalie is the camper. No, no, no. Okay, having the goalie as a camper is different, though, because that would imply he's doing something based around an objective. Because if you're defending the goalie, you're defending an objective, which is fine. If you want to send an objective, that's fine. In your example, and I don't actually want to. I mean, if we go back to the uh, the other analogy, I do have something to say about that. I'm starting to actually get tired now, but <laughs> <laughs> um, there's just a lot of logic in here happening. Um, uh, okay, I completely lost my train of thought. You can continue, Liam. Okay. Uh, and <laughs> my opinion is that playing. Oh, sorry, I remember... uh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, so if he does move from destination without mm -hmm. dying, yep, people are probably still trying to kill him, so he's still getting distraction points. <laughs> <laughs> and if he calls out to his team before and during his move that like and telegraphs his movements, then his team can cover him while he moves. And then when they see somebody shoot at him, then they take out the guy that shot at him and then things like that. Okay. But and I'm I only wanna like I don't think any team needs more than one camper. I, okay, but he, okay. So based off of that, that's assuming a lot of things, right? That's assuming a that you can get coordination and teamwork out of a random match in team deathmatch, right? I mean, I am assuming a lot of things, but it's just that camping can be a good strategy. It's not that it's always a good strategy, or that it's you know, it's not an absolute. It's just it can be used, is what this person's saying. I okay. So to touch on that, I think that the classical definition of camping, right, where you got your riot shield, your spaz twelve, and you're sitting in the corner with a right, you know, claymore up, right. I think that style of camping cannot be useful in a successful degree. I think it may have like a one in 10 chance of being successful where you might get a successful opportunity out of it. But in general, it is a losing strategy, right? And if a strategy, in my opinion, has a below 50% success rate, that's a bad strategy, right? Like that's a very generous region of error, right? Like when you're talking like a coin flip chance of it working or not, like that's a pretty bad strategy, right? So it's like, if we're so low that we're below a coin flip, like, I think it's a fundamentally flawed strategy that will not consistently reward you as a player, right? That being said... Camping is bad. Yeah, that being said, I think there are other options where, you know, again, holding for rotates, playing positioning, playing objectives, all that stuff. Like, I think using it in a sense that makes sense based around the title you're playing can make sense. Like, holding down a choke, for example. Like, hey, 
you know, Braxton, you watch this way, I'll watch this way, we'll hold the center point of this map, and together we will camp this choke, quote unquote, right? Now, are we actually camping? Not really, kind of, sort of, you can make an argument that we might be, but because we are working together to hold an objective, it would, in my opinion, not be the same as classical camping. Because again, in my opinion... People are going to say that your whole team is camping, but yeah, not classical, I guess. Yeah, well, but like, okay, if the, okay, but... If it's I'm based, I'm not saying it's true. Yeah, but again, it's if it's based around an objective. In my opinion, it's not camping. You're playing the objective at that point, right? Because it's like, you know, if there's a center point in the map, the enemy team keeps going through over and over again. Then if we hold down, or you know, for example, people say spawn camping is bad, right? And in my opinion, spawn camping is literally I just kill you before you respawn. Like you respawn and I kill you, and you just spawn there again, right? So at that point, it's not me camping as much as it is me just playing the objective because the objective is to kill you, and you're spawning here, so I'm playing your objective, right? You know, it's like. I don't think it's necessarily camping if you're playing the object, or at least in a classical, classical terminology, right? Like if we're you know going with a classical definition of camping, then I don't think it is if you're playing for an objective. All right. Well, with all of that being said, pro bono debate. Yes, it has been. Let us know in the hey. comments down below what you think. Is camping a legitimate strategy or not? Time honored, time honored tradition and discussion. Let us know what you think. And thank you for watching. We'll catch you in the next somewhat less heated episode. <laughs> Maybe. But whether it's classical or modern uh, definition of campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make video is classic while better than retail while. Uh, obviously. What? That's not even a question. All right. We're, we're, we don't even need to make a video for that. It's, it's obvious, yes. All right. We'll catch you in the next episode, gamers.